Hello, welcome to Using Formative Evaluation to Keep Your Program on Track, a contributed talk by Tom Clark, Kristen DeBruler, and Michael Barber. I'm Tom Clark of Tom Clark Consulting. This is the third talk I'm moderating this morning. So, my, you know, it's hopping room to room. Anyway, the session is being recorded for posting later today and will be available online through July 30th. So you can see all the sessions you couldn't get to online. Dr. Kristen DeBruler is the research manager at Michigan Virtual. She's been in the field for nearly a decade and joined Michigan Virtual in 2012. She conducts research on preparing K-12 online teachers, supporting K-12 students, and other topics related to improving online and blended learning. Michael K. Barber is Associate Professor of Instructional Design at Turo University, California, and has been involved with K-12 distance online and blended learning in a variety of countries for over two decades. His research focuses on the effective design, delivery, and support of K-12 online learning. And Michael's in another session will be bopping over some to visit ours. And so uh, take it away, Kristen. Thank you, Michael, or thank you, Tom, for the introduction. Um, I do appreciate that. Trying to, oh, there we go. Uh, Tom, do you want to do the session objectives here? Okay, I'll do. I'll do those. Yes. So uh, this is part of the last session, or one of the last sessions in the start of online program track. People are starting a new program. Um, so formative evaluation is not commonly understood all that well, well. Most of your school improvement work is formative evaluation. You're trying to issue, work with an issue you found, figure out solutions, get gather evidence, and take action. So if a lot of uh, what you already do in schools is formative evaluation. And it can also do things like help you identify best practices and areas of concern and keep your program on track. So so we're, we're going to learn about a little bit here to, about how learners are using it to improve programs. So why use formative evaluation? Well, it's it, it, like I said, commonly used in school improvement, like tracking student progress in the LMS. Uh, you might be using a yellow, a, you know, green, yellow, red to, uh, to a kind of dashboard thing to track where students are at. And then reviewing your courses, quality, you know, quality assurance for your courses using national standards. But it can also be the things like finding best practices. So let's go to the next one. And I'm going to turn it over now to Kristen. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for that great overview. I appreciate it. Um, and for the introduction. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'm going to talk just briefly about using formative evaluation to identify best practices for virtual teaching. Um, this report was conducted in the spring of 2021, and this report, as well as all of our others, are available on our website at missionvirtual.org. So if you want to read the full research report or any of the other work that we do, you can find it all there. Uh, specifically, this report looked at what strategies virtual teachers use to engage students in their online courses, um, which strategies they believe to be most effective, and how they develop relationships with students in their online courses. So here we surveyed over 1,800 educators. Um, you can see the distribution was mostly teachers, but there were some administrators which we valued that perspective as well. Um, and these uh, educators came from experienced virtual programs. And so when we say that, we mean these are well-established programs that have been in operation for a number of years, and their primary focus is, is virtual learning. This is what they do, and they've done for a very long time with great success. Um, again, if you want the full findings and the full methodology, visit the report. I'm just going to go over some of the high level stuff today. Um, so our first finding, a little bit, you know, unsurprising, um, experienced teachers in virtual programs use a variety of strategies to engage students. We know that there's not one thing they do. There's a lot of things they do, just like uh, teachers in classrooms. So what do we mean when we say variety of strategies? Well, if you look at the table, these are in uh, descending order. So um, these are strategies most commonly used by these virtual teachers with experience. So um, some of these you'll see are very instructional design focused, so multiple forms of content. Uh, and this is something that we know is true of any type of learning. If you have complementary forms of multiple types of content, that improves student learning. Um, 
but there's also things on here that are really more personable, more, more human connection type things. So making myself available, posting motivational videos, and including audio and video recordings are something that teachers reported doing quite frequently for student engagement purposes. Uh, we also found that teachers in synchronous virtual courses, which was not a, a very many, if you know, we had the 1700 teachers overall, 48 of them were in synchronous courses. We know this is a very small subset, but they were doing things like providing opportunities for formative assessment, doing um, real-time quizzes, polls, and games with their courses, interacting with groups of students synchronously in real time, and having collaboration on projects. A lot of these strategies are not impossible in asynchronous environments, but they are made much more difficult. But these are still things that teachers could consider using if they're able to implement those in the courses. And we also found that specific teacher actions help build student relationships. Um, and building those relationships led to greater student engagement. And so how did teachers build relationships was sort of the next thing we thought about, right? So we looked at open-ended responses from the survey and we found that teachers, um, kind of all their responses kind of came around five different areas. So the first one that they reported using to build these relationships was around communication. Um, and a lot of the responses had to do with providing multiple opportunities for communication, not just through the LMS, but through texting apps or other um, mediums that, that the student was comfortable with and the teacher was comfortable with. Uh, educators also responded that they used uh, feedback to build relationship. Um, again, a number of the responses indicated that feedback may be the primary communication they have with students. They may not be communicating with the students regularly, but through feedback, they can um, let students know that they care about them, that they know them, and provide a little bit of information about the teacher themselves. Uh, teacher, the educators also um, reported using strategies to appeal to student interests. So again, you know, if they knew a, a student was really into basketball, they might include something about that in, in feedback to the student or in the communication so that the, the student knew that the teacher was there and they cared about them as, as a person and not just as a you know, a name in the LMS. Fourth, we found this thing that we called humanizing. Um, and so it was, this is really the virtual teachers taking steps to let the students know that someone is there, that someone's on the other end of that computer. So it might be doing a face-to-face -face session with a student. The cameras are on, at least for the beginning, so the student can see that there's a person there or telling a little bit about themselves or their family to let them know that again, it's. It's not just a, an auto-graded computer on the other end. There is a teacher there who does care deeply about the student and their purpose. And finally, synchronous meetings. Again, this one wasn't as frequently used because of the challenges of this with you know, a large asynchronous class, but some teachers did report using this to build relationships with students and it's clear why. I mean, if you're engaging in real time with people, that helps to build the relationship a bit faster. And I think an important note here with these five strategies is not that the teachers would say, you know, I would try communication and then I would try feedback and then I would appeal. These were in, in almost all the responses, more than one. And, and at times three or four of these strategies were used in conjunction. So, you know, feedback is a form of communication and in that feedback, they may humanize themselves as a teacher and appeal to the student's interest. So these, these five things really all did work together to develop that student relationship. Um, and so why does this all matter? So um, and we were able to use what we found here to, to think about how this can help teachers in, in new virtual environments and new virtual teachers. So we've got these strategies here, but I think it's important that teachers take the time to develop these skills. It's gonna be an effortful process, but I think it's one that is very valuable uh, because we know that when teachers and students develop strong relationships, um, students are more likely to be engaged in their online Thank you. I'll pass it back over to you, Tom. Great. Thank you, Kristen. A very insightful study, and thank you for sharing the results in such an engaging way. <laughs> so anyway, I want to remind people that they can post um, questions in the chat, in the page where they logged into this session. It's in Pathable. It's the LMS. That's the chat that works. The Zoom chat does not work. And because it's a webinar, we can't like unmute you and have you talk or anything. So anyway, so please post your questions 
there if you have questions for Kristen or for me. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about using it to keep your program on track. Formative evaluation. With evaluation is your friend. It's your friend. It's people just like you. Okay. So anyway, um, so here, I, Michael Barber, our, our co-presenter, who's in another session right now, um, shared some things about Canadian school leaders, what they learned through COVID. Uh, and Rand, Randy Labonte, um, his, his, one of his co-authors, said, you've got to be ready to prepare and respond quickly, support teachers in terms of changing their pedagogy and their practices. And he said, I really have an exception to the term pivot to be online. You're supposed to be nimble and agile. Well, that doesn't work well in schools. And because online is based on a whole set of experiences, it takes time to develop that practice. And schools are expected to just change everything right now. So that was a frustration, but it's a real, real thing. You need time to build your program. And a lot of the people who are developing an online program may be in the same case, place, like their administrator says, can you uh, build an online program for next month or whatever? Uh, and so they need to do things quickly. Uh, next slide, please, Kristen. So, and so he noted that uh, the schools will emerge with an ability to evaluate how well they were able to implement emergency remote teaching. And it's important to avoid the, attempt, the temptation to uh, uh, equate emergency, emergency remote teaching with online learning during these evaluations. And we're seeing the results in states which are saying, you know, online learning bad, in, uh, in person good. And so um, it's just a, it's a, it's a challenge, but, but basically the schools are learning about, they can do new things. And they do of course have LMS systems now pretty much because of, of COVID and they're gonna start using them. Next slide, please. Okay, so, and the thing is, my mantra is start your, pro, your evaluation work, your formative evaluation, school improvement work at the beginning of the program. Don't wait till the end and, and think you're gonna do a study. That's, not, that's summative evaluation. Formative is on the fly. You basically, as you're doing, building your program, be planning on what you're gonna gather for data, what you wanna track over time to see if you're growing, see if things are going okay. Next one, please. And, um, and so by monitoring your program as you go along with an evaluation plan in place, you can, you'll be able to uh, change the program over time as you need to. Next one, please. And here, one thing that's good to think about in terms of what you're trying to track is what are the outcomes you're trying to see in individual people? Uh, like students actively engaged in ongoing, ongoing online learning you might see that teachers are using interactive activities when you go and look at what's going on. And students are actively participating and maybe students are creating work products. They're not just like taking an online test for maybe somebody else is taking the test. So you know it's really them. Next one, please. And, and uh, this also gets into the design-based uh, developmental evaluation where the evaluators work with the teachers and, and the people in the schools to create educational innovations and kind of test them over time. And I give an example here from Riverview School District. Next one, please. And so now we're to the, I think we're to the, the Q&A part and I would love to have people ask questions uh, for Kristen and I. So feel free to go to the page where you logged in and type in your question. 